Hi there and welcome to this first Refactor Clinic episode. Now the idea behind this series is that we're going to try and refactor code to make it more clean and concise and Pythonic. And in doing so, we plan to show some constructs in the Python programming language that help you become a better developer. So that's the goal, to clean up code, but also to show you things that you might not know and situations that you might not know what you can do in those situations in order to improve your code. Um, so let's get started with that. So what we're going to work with in this episode is we're going to work with this get start end date function. This takes two parameters, a start date and an end date. And basically what um, the goal of this is to check whether or not start date is defined or whether it's none. If it's defined, we will set the start date to that date. Otherwise, we have a default here of date.today minus time delta of seven days, i.e. seven days ago. So basically, if the start date is not defined, we will have a default here of seven days ago. And it's very similar with the end date. This is a parameter as well. And if it's defined, that's what we use. Otherwise, we will define today, date.today as the start date. Now, this function is, this comes from a real life example. Um, however, it has been adapted. This isn't necessarily something that even needs a function as we're going to see, but we're going to work with it for now um, anyway. So let's get started with that. This is how you call the function. Um, we simply call it with a given date. This is the start date, this is the end date. And in this case, we can call it also with none, because remember, if it's none, then the else block will, um, will be evaluated and you will get a default of seven days ago in this case or today in the else case or in the end date case. So what we're going to do is we're going to refactor this function and we're going to make some positive improvements to the function. So let's get started. I'm going to copy the code down here um, so we can actually see the original function and we'll get started by redefining this function so that it's more clean and concise. And in order to do that, I'm going to um, I'm going to import a construct from the typing module called, called optional. From typing, import optional. Now, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take the, the parameters and we're going to make it clear what these are supposed to be. Um, because right now we don't have any idea of what they are. We know that they can sometimes be none because there's an, you know, there's an if statement that says if it's defined, do this, else do that. So we need to make it clear. We need to have better code documentation essentially that will allow us to do that and Python 3 has typing constructs that allow you to do this. Another thing we're going to quickly do is rename the function because uh, Python does not conventionally use camel case, it uses underscores. So let's rename the function and we'll rename it to we'll just copy this. So it's going to be called get start and end date and it's going to take two parameters and it's going to be the same names Q start date and that is going to have a type of an optional string with a default value of none. And similarly, Q end date, also an optional string, which defaults to none. And this function returns a tuple with the start date and the end date. And these are supposed to both be strings. So we're going to indicate that this function returns a tuple of strings with that syntax there. So this is all new to Python 3. But um, it's very useful because it tells your fellow developers what is the signature of this function. An optional string means it could be none. Um, and the default value means that if it is not there, that is what it's going to default to. So now let's write the body of the code. And the thing about this function is, you can see here, it's an if statement and, it, and an else statement with a single line. At the start date is set to the queue start date, if the queue start date exists otherwise it is given a default value now what we can do is we can actually use a conditional expression to do this and we can say that the start date i'll just give this an extra line start date is equal to q start date if q start date copy that else is going to be equal to the default argument um, and that's going to be that there now i'm going to shorten this and we're going to move this to a variable called last week. So I'll say last week equals, and that's going to be date.today minus time delta of seven days. 
So now what we're saying here is the start date, if the queue start date exists, it's going to be that, otherwise it's going to be last week. And we're going to do something very similar for the end date. We're going to say it's going to be the queue end date, if that is defined. Otherwise, we're going to say it's going to be the date.today function, which will return the current date. And once we've done that, we simply need to return the start date and the end date as before. Now this is better because this is quite, you know, we have an if statement, we have an else statement, then we have another if and else statement, but it's very simple conditional logic. We can move it into a more concise single line expression. So we've cut down four lines of code into a single line of code and that is more maintainable, it's more readable and it allows this function to be more concise as well as of course having this documentation about the function signature as well. So that's all very useful for your fellow developers and your team or if you're doing open source pro projects, all very useful. Um, now that this is much better but there is actually one final way we can maybe clean this up a little bit. Now the start date as, as I said here, it's set to this if it exists, if it's set to a truthy value. So this is a parameter and if it's defined, if it's not none, we'll use it. Otherwise we use the default of last week. Now because we're using, we're, we're checking for a variable's value, whether it's truthy and then we're using that if it is, we can actually do this slightly more concisely by simply saying Q start date or the default get rid of the else block. So this is more concise and we can do the same here for the end date. So here we're saying the start date is the Q start date or it's the string of last week, the default. And this works because if the start date is defined, then this will evaluate to um, a true value. Um, otherwise you, you'll use the or statement to use the default value and you can do the same with the end date. And if you evaluate that function, with the calling code that we've got here, we should get the same results as we got originally. And that's the entire goal of refactoring. Of course, we renamed this function to that. And I need to import the date time module. I think I didn't run this. I think the cell, I think the Jupyter notebook restarted. So let's run everything and we get these dates. And if we run this code again, we get the same results as we got up there. So basically, we've refactored that function into a much more concise representation. It's more Pythonic and I think it's better um, overall to do this. Now, we go into this code in a lot more detail on the blog post and on the, you know, in the other Jupyter notebook that's available on GitHub. You can see more text explaining the process um, and what we're doing, but essentially, you know, we have the, these refactoring steps to make this code more Pythonic and in the end, this makes it more maintainable and it makes it easier for you to develop and go back to later on. So that is how you refactor a function in Python. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you found it useful and we'll see you again in the next episode.